By the end of this video we're going to be able to drop down for our platforms and also be able to jump back through if you've done the previous video. If you haven't seen the video about how to go up through the platform, you can check that one out. It's really short so it won't take up a bunch of your time. This one's just for dropping back down through the platform. Very cool, let's get started. If you haven't been following the series so far, you can skip ahead to this time. But if you have, well, how we've currently got our project set up is with this ground tile being for our bottom floor and for our platforms. If we want to drop down for these platforms now, we're going to drop for our bottom floor which we don't want. So in our tile palette, I'm going to have the active tile map as ground. I'm going to select this eraser. And I'm going to erase the bottom floor down here. Then what I'm going to do is copy ground and paste it. I'm going to rename this bottom floor back to our tile palette with the eraser selected still and active tile map now switch to bottom floor. I'm going to erase these platforms. So just go over them, you'll see your collider lines are disappearing. I've got some up the top as well. And then what I'm going to do is select this little tar down the bottom for our flat line and draw our bottom floor on. You can see we've got our platform effector 2D still showing. You can go to your composite collider 2D, untick, unused by effector, and then we'll remove this platform effector 2D from our bottom floor. Now, make sure you do this for level two as well and any other levels you have. Cool, okay. So in this project, we're using Unity input system. So I'm gonna open up my player controls from my assets and add a new action. I'm gonna call this drop and on no binding. I'm gonna select this, select path and click listen. I'm gonna press S on my keyboard so we can drop down using S. I'm gonna add another bind Binding. So you go to drop the plus, no binding, and click listen again. I'm going to press down on my arrow key. So you can press down arrow or S on your keyboard. And then we'll drop down our platform. Click save asset and close this off. And we'll click on our player and go to player movement. Double click on the player movement script. So in player movement, if we scroll down just above our jump, I'm going to go public void drop. Then we'll pass in input action dot call by context, call it context. And in here, we're going to check if our context has been performed. So if we pressed our drop button and is grounded, and then we're also going to want to know if we're on a platform. So we may be grounded and on that bottom floor. So we'll say and is on platform. When this is true, we're going to call a coroutine for dropping. Cool. So let's go up the top and make this is on platform. We can go under our ground check. So we'll go ball is on platform. Cool, and we can scroll back down. And to know if we're on a platform, we're gonna go on collision enter 2D. We'll say if our collision.gameObject.compare tag is platform, then is on platform equals true. And we're gonna want a on collision exit 2D. And we can copy what was above in the enter and set is on platform to false. Cool, now we have our is on platform Boolean set up. We can now write a coroutine for dropping down. To drop down, I'm gonna keep it simple and disable our player's collider. My player has a box collider, which keeps me standing up. I'm gonna go private I enumerator and call this disable player collider. I'm going to pass in a float of disable time. Now we're going to want to grab our player's collider and set it to false here so that we're not grabbing it over and over again. Let's scroll to the top and we'll go box collider 2D player collider. Grab this and in our start where we're getting our trail renderer, we're going to go player collider equals get component box collider 2D. So now we have our player collider down in our disable player collider. I'm going to go player collider dot enabled equals false. By disabling our collider, we're going to fall through our platform. We only want this to be disabled for a little bit. So I'm going to go yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And I'm going to pass in our disable time. And underneath, I'll copy this line and go player collider enabled equals true. So our player will be landing on our platforms again. Now all we have to do is in our drop function above, go start coroutine and pass in disable player collider and pass in our disable time. So I'm going to go 0.25F, which should be enough time for us to drop through before touching any of our other platforms. And so this doesn't keep getting called over and over while we hold down S and we start a million coroutines in our drop check. We're going to go and player collider dot enabled. This lets us know that we're not currently dropping and that should be it. Back in Unity and whatever you have that is holding your platforms, for me, that's my ground tile map. Click on your platforms object and under your tag, go add tag, click the plus, add platform. Click on your object again that has the platforms and select platform in this tag. Remember, if you've done this the same way as me, you're gonna need to go and change ground in level two as well. Unless if you're using a prefab, then that's fine. Cool, and finally, if we go to our player, go to player input events player and scroll down, we can see our move event jump event hold event and now we've got our drop event down here if we click the plus and then drag player into this slot under no function go to player movement and then pick drop and now when we press play so now i can press s and drop down and i can't drop through our final bottom floor and i can jump up and go back through so cool in our next video we're going to be adding moving platforms and add a little more fun to our game so that's exciting see you in the next one bye